Okay, this is a revision video for Unit 1, key topic 3, um, detente from the late 1960s to the late 1970s. Okay, so detente emerges out of the crisis that was the Cuban Missiles Crisis. Um, when both superpowers had come to the brink and realised that they should probably step back and put some um, limits in place. Now in the late 1960s you get the Outer Space Treaty and the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty being signed. So the Outer Space Treaty said that no nuclear weapons could be um, placed in space. So that made space a safe zone, as a place for exploration. It removed the fear that anything that happened in space in terms of satellites or um, the mission of getting man on the moon, that wouldn't be used for um, nuclear reasons, arms race purposes. And the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty tried to limit um, nuclear information in terms of passing it on to other countries. Now at the same time as this is going on, the Americans are fighting in Vietnam. That's part of the reason why they don't get involved in the Prague Spring. And a little bit of background is that actually the Vietnam conflict brings the um, American President Nixon and the um, Soviet leader Brezhnev together because Brezhnev works as an intermediary, a go-between, if you like, um, with North Vietnam in some of the peace talks. And that, you know, confirms the fact that within the Cold War, they do want to see some limits um, being placed on um, what the superpowers are capable of. Now, the first... Um, set of talks you need to be aware of are SALT 1, which is signed in 1972. And it stands for Strategic Arms Limitation Treaty, and these are the result of three years worth of talks. And um, it seems the first step in a long journey to reaching you know, very positive goals about limiting nuclear weapons. Okay. So, they agree that there's going to be no further production of strategic ballistic missiles, short-range, lightweight missiles. They agree the ABM, the Anti-Ballistic Missile Treaty, and this says that only two sites can be developed by each side containing 1,000 missiles each. Um, and this is you know, clear recognition of the need to um, protect the nuclear balance by ensuring neither side could ever consider itself immune from retaliation. So an ABM system would destroy um, missiles before they were able to hit. But if you can only protect two sites, then um, neither side is going to gain an advantage. Okay. Now, what you've got to be aware of in SALT 1 is that strategic bombers, there's no restrictions placed on strategic bombers, there's no restrictions placed on um, MIRVs, so the Multiple Independently Targetable Re-Entry Vehicles, right? They agree that each side is allowed to use satellites to check that the other side is not breaking the arms limit, and they do agree a five-year freeze on the total number of intercontinental ballistic missiles. So there are some limits there. So this is definitely moving in the right direction. So that is SALT 1. But these um, discussions are then ongoing and they're hoping to lead to a SALT 2 treaty. Now the next thing you need to be aware of is the Apollo Soyuz mission in 1975. Now this is a joint space mission, so you get an American spacecraft and a Russian spacecraft docking high above the Earth. Um, it's symbolic, following you know, the race to the moon and the race to put the first satellite in space. This is confirming that space is an area of exploration and it's not a threat. In 1975, you get the Helsinki Agreements. And these are based on um, three big principles. 
they're going to consider security, cooperation and human rights. And um, 35 countries attend, including the USSR and the USA. Um, key decisions. East and West Germany accepted each other's existence. That they agree that the UN is going to be used to settle disputes, and that if you are going to do big military manoeuvres or practice, uh, you know, or practice manoeuvres, that foreign representatives can observe them. Okay, cooperation. This is going to be economic, uh, industrial, scientific, and educational. So, for example, the USA is going to buy oil from the USSR, and the USSR will buy wheat from the USA. Um, Scientifically, they're going to share information and research so to do with medicine and space and educationally there's going to be um, student exchanges and then with human rights there should be respect for the freedom of speech, movement, religion and information. So this is stabilising the situation, there's greater cooperation and that stability should limit the possibility of conflict. Now. Unfortunately, um, many countries were aware that the USSR wasn't honouring um, many of these um, agreements, particularly to do with things like freedom of speech and freedom of religion, but it had brought a degree of stability to the nature of the um, relationship. Okay? Um, you need to be aware that Nixon visited Brezhnev in Moscow in 1974, and they, you know, the, the talks continue that they're going to develop broad, mutually beneficial um, relationships and they're going to promote cooperation. And, um, you know, lots of um, discussions are made about how to, um, how to achieve that. But there's a lot of talk, there's not a lot of, you know, formal agreements going on. Okay? So there's this principle that arms are going to be limited and then um, you get SALT 2. Now as part of SALT 2 there's the 1974 Vladivostok Agreement which stated that they would reduce nuclear warheads to 2,250. So that important principle is set down which is part of the SALT 2 um, arrangements. Unfortunately, everything that's agreed in SALT 2, which included a limit on MIRV systems and a ban on the launch of, uh, a ban on the construction of land based intercontinental ballistic missile launchers, um, and limits on deployment of new types of offensive arms, none of that actually came into being because it was not ratified by the Americans due to the invasion of Afghanistan and it's that invasion of Afghanistan that is seen as ending detente. So that period from the late 1960s through until 1979 when there seems to be a real, um, real focus on you know a warming of relations, a real need to reduce the risk of nuclear war and control and limit the production of nuclear weapons that comes to an end with what happens in Afghanistan.